Hello everybody! Hope you're doing great and are ready for some Volcano updates. Wait, no. This is not a Volcano update video. This is something different. I'm going to be telling you all about Katla today, her past and her future. So, get strapped. Katla is one of Iceland's most active volcanoes and also happens to produce some of the largest explosive eruptions in Iceland, with over 300 eruptions in the last 12,000 years and 20 since recordings started. The Katla volcano system sits under Mirdalsjökull, Iceland's fourth largest glacier. Under the glacier is a large caldera spanning around 10 kilometers in diameter and covering an area of 100 square kilometers. It's not 100% certain, but it's thought that another caldera might be within the large one, near the peak Goda Bunka. That area is also where the most powerful eruptions originate. Since this is Iceland, there are a lot of volcano systems in the vicinity of Katla, with the closest and perhaps the most famous one being Eja Fjalla Jökull or the volcano that caused air traffic in Europe to take a break in 2010. Eyjafjallajökull isn't nearly as active as Katla, and in the past Katla would often erupt right after Eyjafjallajökull, showing how the two systems have effects on each other. In 2010, during the eruption of Eyjafjallajökull and Fimvörðuháls, scientists were nervously watching Katla, since there's a well-known patch with silica-rich magma with a very high viscosity under Godabunka. Earthquakes showed that magma was moving towards it. If the magma from the eruptions in 2010 would have gotten in touch with that thick, high silica magma, it would have most likely caused a huge explosive eruption. But that didn't happen. There have been, as said earlier, plenty of eruptions since settlement or around 20. These eruptions differ in size, some small, some large. We don't know too much about the eruptions before the 16th century, since people didn't write much about them then, but we can always look at signs in ash layers, traces of floods, and pyroclastic flows. The two largest and most destructive eruptions happened almost 1000 years apart. The earlier one, Eldgjá in 934, is the largest lava flow eruption in 8,000 years. The one 8,000 years ago was also in Iceland. The Eldgjá eruption was a fissure eruption and the fissure spanned a whopping 72 kilometers. Of course not continuous, but that doesn't matter. It lasted for years, possibly eight, and during that time the world's second largest lava field in the last 10,000 years was constructed. It covers 800 square kilometers, which is 100 square kilometers larger than La Palma. It pumped out 18 cubic kilometers of lava, which is just insane. This eruption deserves a video on its own, so let's save the rest. The other large eruption was the last eruption we've seen in Katla. In 1918, a massive explosive eruption took place in Katla. The ash plume rose over 14 kilometers into the air. It's thought that around 0.7 cubic kilometers of ash, pyroclastic flows and other minerals were erupted, which would have put it just under a VEI for eruption, but it's still classified as a VEI for eruption though. Katla always produces a glacial flood when she erupts, or a jökul hlaup, and the one in 1918 was no joke. In the 1755 eruption, which is thought to have been larger than the one in 1918, or a VEE-5 eruption, the flood discharge was somehow better recorded than in 1918, but these two eruptions were pretty similar. The discharge is thought to have been 200 to 400,000 cubic meters a second, or 7.1 to 14.1 million cubic feet per second, for my American viewers, which could have made it larger and the world's four largest rivers combined. 200 million cubic meters of ash, sand and other minerals from Katla were carried by the flood, 
which extended the coastline south of the town Vík by 3 kilometers. The coastline has since then returned back to normal levels. So, Katla can produce large explosive eruptions, but shines when it comes to fissure eruptions, as a lot of Icelandic volcanoes do. Since settlement, Katla has erupted every 50 to 90 years. It's now been over 100 years since the last eruption. Visible eruption, that's to say. We think that there were teeny tiny eruptions in 1955, 1999 and 2011, since we suddenly had minor glacial floods from Mirtarsjökull. If they really occurred, they were so small that they didn't even breach the glacier, but we're not 100% sure that happened. So, we're expecting an eruption from Katla at any time now. Will it be very large, considering the long break it's taking now? Well, it's more likely the eruption could be small, since Katla tends to take long breaks after big eruptions like the one in 1918. The small eruptions I mentioned could be an example of that. Earthquake activity has been unusually high under Godabunga in the recent years. That area is thought to host larger eruptions. Can Katla cause any major damage to people? Yes. Vík is a town just south of Mýrdalsjökull, and if Katla erupts in the east part of Mýrdalsjökull, a flood could wipe out the town. But if it erupts in Góðabunga, Vík should be clear. Then the flood should come on the west side of the glacier. But the people in the area have plans to evacuate, so this should be okay. For now though, We'll just have to wait and see what happens. I really hope you enjoyed the video since this is my first time doing something like this. If you like it, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you want to know anything geology related about Iceland, you can put some ideas in the comments too. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you in the next video.